trapped in a virtual reality game, a nerd has to take on an entire server and find three legendary Easter eggs to become the game's new owner. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Ready Player One, from 2018. In a futuristic suburb of Columbus, Wade lives in a trailer with his aunt Alice. Despite this, the young man spends his days inside an abandoned van where he plays Oasis, a virtual reality game that the whole world plays. Using the treadmill and a VR goggle, Wade enters the Oasis, a place where anything is possible, and all the games in the world are connected. To attract even more people, Halliday, the creator of Oasis, spent several years improving the game, but ended up dying mysteriously. Before leaving, he left a recording revealing to everyone that there is an Easter egg in his creation. Halliday has promised that the first person to solve the mystery will inherit all his shares, valued at more than $500 billion, as well as full control over Oasis. Before he perished, Halliday programmed his avatar Anorak to create three keys, which are located in hidden challenges scattered around the Oasis, but even after five years, no one has managed to find the first key and the scoreboard is still empty. Despite this, one player managed to unravel the first challenge and discovered that the key lies in a super difficult racing game. As a huge Halliday fan, Wade tries to win the race every day, but despite his efforts and even those of big corporations like IOI, no one has ever managed to get past the obstacles on the track. Not even Artemis, who is one of Oasis' greatest Easter egg hunters. About to cross the finish line, Parseval is surprised by King Kong who destroys the entire track, leaving only a ramp that Artemis intends to use. Knowing that she won't make it, Parseval gets out of the car and holds the girl, letting the bike go over the ramp and be crushed by the mutant gorilla. As her vehicle has been wrecked, Parseval tells her that his friend H has a garage and takes the girl there, taking the opportunity while he repairs it to get to know her better, but H is very quick and soon everyone leaves the game. The next day, Wade enters the oasis and decides to go to Halliday's memory room, where he asks the curator to take him to one of the parties following the launch of the oasis. In this reminiscence, Halliday talks to his former partner Maro about his increasing responsibilities. Thinking he has nothing in this memory, Parseval starts walking towards the exit when Halliday says that he likes the way things used to be, saying that he wishes he could go back in time, walking backwards very quickly. When he hears this, Parseval asks the curator to rewind the recording and rehearses Halliday telling him to put his foot on the gas in reverse. Thinking he's got the message, he takes his DeLorean and heads off to the next race. Instead of accelerating like everyone else, Parseval stands still at the start and starts backing up until he discovers a secret passage in the ground. Underneath the track, the young man continues to accelerate while watching the other competitors being destroyed by a dinosaur and Kong. After everyone has been defeated, Parseval emerges from the underground completely unscathed and reaches the finish line. Suddenly, Anorak appears in front of Parseval and congratulates him on being the first to finish, handing him the key and the hint for the next challenge, which sends his name to the top of the leaderboard. At IOI, the board meets and asks Nolan to do something, saying that if anyone outside the company gets control of Oasis, he will lose his position as chairman. In response, Nolan says that he is investing all his time and money into training new recruits, putting a veritable army into the game to try to win the challenge. At the Oasis, Wade uses the 100,000 prize money to buy the Holy Hand Grenade and the Zemeckis Cube, as well as an immersive suit that is delivered in real life. Meanwhile, Nolan also puts on the suit and sits down at his game station, entering an abandoned world to meet up with Irock. Using the appearance of an evil Superman, Nolan asks if Irock has already obtained the orb and he confirms, saying that with the right words, the object can create an impenetrable magical shield. Nolan asks Irock to take care of the object for a while and says that he already has the next mission, asking him to eliminate Parseval and clean out his inventory. After Wade, Artemis was the second to get a key and entered the scoreboard along with Parseval, accompanied by H, Dato and Sho, all friends of Wade. Together, they try to unravel the clue from the second challenge, which is about escaping the past. Wanting to know which part of the past Halliday wanted to escape from, Parseval goes to the Hall of Memories, where he meets Artemis dressed as Guro. Together, the two will attend another of Halliday's reminiscences, six days before the release of Oasis. In this memory, Parseval discovers that Halliday fell in love with a woman called Karen and asked her out, but was afraid to kiss her and avoided contact with the girl, who years later married Maro, his business partner. Parseval then says that Karen's name is only mentioned in this memory and suggests that this is the part of the past that Halliday wanted to escape. When he hears this, the curator says it's impossible and that Karen was important in both their lives, searching for mentions in the memory of her creator. However, Parseval is confident that Halliday has removed all references to Karen and bets all his coins on it. Checking the system, 
the curator confirms that Parseval is right and hands over a quarter, which is the only money he has. Before leaving, Artemis asks if Parseval is free and arranges to meet him at the disco. When he arrives at the place, Wade becomes the center of attention and several people take pictures with him, including a lynx who implants a bug so that Iraq can hear what they say. Without being suspicious, Artemis speaks openly about what they have discovered so far, revealing that this nightclub was created shortly after Halliday's meeting with Karen. Thinking that the key is there, the two throw themselves into the hole in the center of the disco trying to discover some new secret, but they just float like all the other players. While dancing with Artemis, Parseval decides to talk about his feelings and asks to meet in real life. After the girl rejects him, Parseval says he wants to know her name and tells her he is Wade, a valuable clue for Iraq. Just then, IOI soldiers burst into the nightclub and start attacking the couple, which spoils Iraq's plans. Even against an army, Parseval and Artemis are extremely skilled and manage to defeat almost all the soldiers, but Iraq is even more powerful and lands a shot that almost eliminates them both. With his armor about to run out, Wade activates Zemeckis Cube which is capable of going back 60 seconds in time, allowing them to leave the nightclub before the attack begins. Outside, Artemis begins to argue with Parseval, saying that she no longer has time to play and that she needs to put an end to the IOI as soon as possible, revealing that her father was forced to work in a loyalty center until he perished then she leaves rather upset. At IOI headquarters, Nolan complains to Iraq about letting Parseval escape, but the bounty hunter says he's got something much better and reveals that he's discovered Wade's identity, as well as his address. With this information, Nolan goes to Xandor, his head of security, and asks her to take care of Wade. Unaware that he is being followed, the young man goes to the abandoned van where he receives a message from Nolan asking to talk. After some thought, Wade accepts the invitation and his avatar ends up in the room where the businessman's gaming station is located. Nolan shows the place and says that Parseval can have one just like it if he agrees to work with him, as well as any item inside the Oasis and $25 million. While the businessman is making the offer, Parseval sees a piece of paper with a password on it in the station and struggles to memorize it. After hearing the offer, Parseval says that Halliday would hate it if Nolan won the tournament and claims that he's not a sellout like him. After the rejection, Nolan says that he only made an offer because the council forced him to, but that his plan all along was to get the key himself. The businessman then says that Wade won't be there to see it and reveals that he knows who he is, even giving the address of his aunt's trailer. Finally, Nolan says that there are a lot of things going on in the world and that nobody is going to care about an explosion in a battery in Columbus. Desperate, Wade gets out of the abandoned van and tries to warn his aunt, but her boyfriend answers and tells him not to come anymore. As Wade runs, the drones place several bombs in the trailer and blow up the entire block, taking the lives of several innocent people. Destroyed, Wade returns to the van and uses the VR to leave a message for his friends, but before he can finish speaking, a man appears from behind and uses a substance to make him black out. Some time later, Wade wakes up in a rebel camp, where Artemis apologizes for picking him up like that. After Wade processes the information, the girl tells him her name is Samantha and apologizes for freaking out last time. After making up, the two begin to think about the second challenge and Samantha says that she understood the hint. While putting on her costume, the girl remembers that the meeting Halliday had with Karen was in a movie theater. Despite having deleted all the memories with her, all the movies Halliday watched are still in the memory room. With this new information, the group goes to the curator and asks to see everything Halliday watched during the week of the meeting. Looking at the options, Parseval and Artemis suggest that they have seen the movie The Shining and ask to go inside. Unable to refuse, the curator transports everyone to what appears to be the entrance to the cinema, but when they enter, they discover that they are actually in the lobby of the Overlook Hotel. While his friends are trying to remember where the keys are in the movie, a tennis ball hits H's feet and it roll in the opposite direction. Following the object, the cyborg ends up in a corridor where the twin girls appear asking to play with him. Thinking they can help, the giant cyborg asks for the exit and the girls ignore him, walking towards the elevator. Confused, H goes after the twins and presses the button, which causes a tsunami of blood that starts dragging him through the corridors. Desperate, H tries to grab onto something and accidentally holds the portrait of Karen and Halliday together. As a result of the current, the frame begins to crack and H is again carried away by the blood. A few meters ahead, the cyborg manages to hold onto a door and enters room 237. There, he meets a woman in the bathtub who begins to approach him, turning into a mutant zombie that begins to attack him. Trying not to get hit, H falls into the bathtub and ends up in a bizarre labyrinth, where Jack and the old zombie start chasing him. Just as H is about to be hit, Parseval pulls him through the cafeteria door and they all run towards room 237, 
but H tells them that he has seen Karen's painting and they all decide to follow him. After they fix the portrait, music starts playing and Artemis realizes that the gold room has appeared next to them. There, the girl finds several zombies dancing with Karen, all over a chasm. With a minute left, Wade says that none of this is in The Shining and Samantha replies that the movie was just a distraction. Wanting to reach Karen, the girl jumps into the abyss and grabs hold of the zombies, causing her friends to be transported outside. In the gold room, Samantha jumps on the zombies until she meets Karen in the center, which causes everyone to disappear and Anorak to appear to hand over the key. With the object in hand, Samantha releases the hint for the third challenge, taking first place in the ranking. At the IOI, the recruits are still trying to win the challenge of The Shining when Parseval takes the key, coming in second place. Upon discovering that he is still alive, Nolan calls Xandor who begins to analyze Columbus's cameras, managing to track down the man who captured Wade. Following the tattooed guy, the IOI manages to break into the rebel camp and Samantha leads Wade to an escape route. Instead of running away with him, the girl locks him out and gives herself to Xandor, who decides to take her to a loyalty center. While she is being transported, Wade ends up in an alley where he is met by H, who is actually called Helen. To help her friend, the girl begins to guide him to her van, which is surrounded by IOI drones. At that moment, Dato gets out of the vehicle and manages to knock down the drones with a baseball bat. Inside the van, Sho introduces himself and Helen tells him that the IOI has already found the third challenge at the Anorak Fort on the planet Doom. Wade replies that the main thing now is to rescue Samantha and Helen says she already has a plan for that, taking the van to the safe house. At IOI, the girl is placed in the confinement chamber and ends up inside Fort Anorak, where people are forced to work for the company. In another part of the fort, the soldiers find the ultimate challenge and try to pass what seems to be the easiest test, to reset the Atari 2600 game adventure. While his men try to get through this stage, Nolan asks Iroch to activate the orb, creating an indestructible shield around the fort. Just then, Wade and Dato remove Nolan's VR goggles and point their guns at him, asking for Samantha's location. Out of options, the businessman agrees and gives Wade the access code to communicate with her. To do so, the young man leaves Dato to look after Nolan and goes out of the room to talk to her. As soon as she hears Wade's voice, the girl tells him about the force field around the fort and that they need to think of a way to shut it down. Concerned for Samantha, Wade says that the important thing is to free her and uses the diagram of the cabins to guide her hands to a lever, which, when activated, unlocks the door for her to leave. Before escaping, Samantha asks where Nolan's office is and asks for the station's password, saying that Wade must gather an army on the planet Doom. At the station, Nolan begins to look around and can see H and Dato through the reflection, which makes him realize that he is in an illusion inside the oasis. After confirming that he is still in the VR, the businessman takes off his glasses and tells Xandor about what happened, asking her to go to the loyalty center after Samantha. Without realizing it, Nolan passes the girl on his way to the station. There, Samantha sees the instructions on how to deactivate the orb while Wade makes a live broadcast to all the players, telling them everything that Nolan is planning. Seeing the live stream, Nolan decides to go back to the station and almost catches Samantha, who is forced to run to another room. On Planet Doom, Parseval continues his speech and calls on all players to protect Halliday's memory, gathering an army of rebels who begin to attack the barrier. At the IOI, Samantha goes to the war room and finds an empty station, infiltrating the fort. As the orb is well protected, Artemis advances slowly, and when she gets close enough, she uses a drone to transmit her voice, uttering the incantation that deactivates the orb. This breaks down the barrier and the war begins in earnest, with IOI soldiers advancing towards the rebels. Using his DeLorean, Wade advances across the battlefield and rescues Artemis from a giant robot. Although Wade begs Samantha to leave the IOI, the girl continues to fight alongside him and eliminates several enemies. Suddenly, Helen throws the Chuck into Parseval's lap, who hurls the doll into the soldier's midst, eliminating several in one fell swoop. With his troops at a disadvantage, Nolan decides to act and summons Mechagodzilla, who turns the game in his favor. To face him, H controls the Iron Giant and goes after the cybernetic King of Monsters, but is easily defeated. Using an artifact capable of changing his form for two minutes, Dato transforms into the Gundam, an overpowered Super Megazord that can take down Mechagodzilla. While running across the battlefield, Parseval sees that the Iron Giant is on fire and tries to rescue H, but Artemis says she'll take care of it and asks him to go to the fort. After some time fighting Mechagodzilla, the artifact's time runs out and Dato reverts to his original form, easily eliminated by an atomic blast from the King of the Kaijus. 
Now that no one can stop him, the businessman activates Mechagodzilla's missiles when the Iron Giant jumps on his head, causing him to miss the projectiles. In the giant's hands, Artemis hits the brass lizard in the eye several times, opening a window that gives access to the cabin where Nolan is. Without thinking twice, Samantha throws a grenade that destroys Mechagodzilla from the inside out, causing Nolan's avatar to be destroyed. Outside the oasis, the businessman realizes that Samantha is still in the building and goes to the war room, taking off the masks of H of the employees looking for her. In the game, Iraq destroys the bridge leading to the fort and H uses the Iron Giant as a way for his friends to cross. Realizing this, Iraq shoots the giant, who begins to fall. While he's reloading his weapon, Sho takes the opportunity to throw a shuriken that rips off Iraq's arm, causing the man to back away. Despite this, the giant can't save himself and H is consumed by the lava along with him. At the entrance to the fort, Parseville once again asks Artemis to log off, but as the girl doesn't comply, he decides to remove her himself, firing a shot that makes her avatar disappear. Because of this, the girl is taken out of the simulator by one of the employees before Nolan can see her, leaving the building safely. Back in the game, Parseville is surrounded by soldiers and decides to use the holy hand grenade, blowing up all the avatars and portals at once. In this way, Sho and Parseville manage to get to the Atari and watch the IOI employee playing, but despite resetting the adventure, the floor gives way and he is eliminated. Seeing this, Parseville remembers that adventure was the first game to have an Easter egg and comes to the conclusion that they shouldn't win, but find the secret. At that moment, Nolan appears with Iraq and says that this is the last chance to resolve things peacefully, offering him 50 million. Obviously Wade refuses and Nolan takes the Cataclysm, the strongest bomb in the game, which is capable of destroying all the avatars on the planet. The businessman then says that he will never enter the oasis again and that this is his last chance to save his allies. As Parseville still won't give in, Nolan begins to unlock the Cataclysm, but just as he's about to activate it, Wade kicks the bomb over and begins to confront the twisted Superman. Although Parseville starts off struggling, he is much more experienced and has many skills, including the Hadouken he uses to knock Nolan out. Unluckily for Wade, the businessman falls right next to the Cataclysm and finishes activating the bomb, destroying all the avatars and resetting the score. Despite the explosion, Parseville is still alive in the game and is the only one on Planet Doom. Confused, the young man begins to feel something in his pocket and puts his hand into check, discovering that the curator's coin was actually an extra life. In real life, Helen drives through the streets of Columbus and finds Samantha lost, rescuing the girl. Because of this, the drones manage to locate the van and Xandor calls Nolan, who takes a car to go after them personally. In the Oasis, Parseville plays adventure in search of the invisible dot. When he finds it, the young man takes the point back to the main screen and finds the first Easter egg ever created in a video game, causing the name of Adventure's creator to appear on the screen. Just then, the ground begins to give way and Anorak emerges from the snow crystals, holding out his hand to give him the key. When Wade tries to pick it up, some IOI cars approach and start hitting the van, causing Parseville to fall into the game. Despite this, the young man manages to get the key and talks to all the Oasis players, revealing his real name and saying that he needs the help of the residents of the stacks. After passing on the message, Wade asks Helen to drive towards the stacks and uses the three keys to unlock the final door. In the next phase, Parseville arrives in a room full of treasures and Anorak hands him a golden pen, asking him to sign the papers to become the owner of the Oasis. In real life, Xandor jumps into the van and fights Dato, who manages to disarm her. Despite his skill, the young man is unable to defeat the woman and is knocked out, leaving Samantha to fight with her. Seeing what's going on, Wade decides to help and hits Xandor with a kick, causing the woman to fall out of the moving van. Now that things have calmed down, the young man returns to the game and says that this isn't right, because the contract represented the moment when Halliday made Morrow give up the game. With that, Parseval says he won't make the same mistake and Anorak completely changes the scene, transporting them to the room where Halliday grew up. Outside the game, Helen is reaching the stacks when Nolan catches up with them, slamming into the back of the van. After the impact, the businessman gets out of the car and starts walking towards the van when the residents of the pile appear, saying that they know he is responsible for the explosion. With a gun, Nolan manages to make everyone move away and starts walking towards the van. In the game, Halliday tells him that he created Oasis to escape reality, but despite all its flaws, the developer discovered that the real world is the only place where people can really be happy. After the speech, Halliday delivers the egg just as Nolan arrives in the van, but before he can shoot, the police show up and manage to arrest him, saving Wade. After delivering the egg, Halliday thanks Parseville for playing and leaves, leaving Wade to return to the real world. 
At that moment, Morrow appears with the company's lawyers and asks him to sign the papers, but Wade refuses to take the Oasis alone and divides it equally between the five of them. After signing the document, Wade goes to talk to Morrow, who claims to have seen everything up close. While the young man tries to understand, Morrow hands over an extra life coin, revealing that he was the curator and that he had been by Wade's side all this time. Now that they have control of Oasis, the five rehire Morrow and prevent any IOI member from accessing the server, which bankrupts the company. In addition, Wade leaves the game closed twice a week, encouraging everyone to live in the real world just as Halliday wanted. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.